Older people with osteoporosis and at risk for falls are prone to having this painful bone fracture. Especially in older women with lower BMI or body mass index are more likely to suffer from this traumatic condition. Stay tuned to learn more about this common traumatic bone fracture in the elderly population. Welcome to Region Med 101 podcast with Dr. Yu. Learn about all things medicine, health, and wellness. We hope you enjoy listening. Please show your support by subscribing and follow our podcast. Traumatic hip fractures, an all too common condition that occurs in the elderly population. I would like to now introduce Dr. Jamal Khan, Physical Medicine Rehabilitation Chief Resident Graduate of Stony Brook University Hospital and current pain fellow at the University of Minnesota Medical Center, who will discuss hip fractures in detail. Hip fractures. This is caused by a traumatic break in the upper quadrant of the femur bone, also known as the thigh bone. Unfortunately, as our population ages, so too does the number of hip fractures. There are major risk factors, also known as things that can raise the probability of falls, and they include older age, a condition of thin bones called osteoporosis, and frequent falls indoors and outdoors. Women are also more likely to suffer hip fractures due to their higher incidence of osteoporosis. Those with a lower body mass index are also higher risk of hip fractures due to their lower bone density. How do patients present with hip fractures? People who experience hip fractures usually report pain in the groin area as well as difficulty walking. There may be some swelling or bruising in the area of the hip and groin as well. The leg may look like it's turned away from the body, also known as externally rotated, as well as shorter compared to the uninjured side. How do physicians manage this condition? Physicians when managing hip fractures should first know the type of hip fracture that occurred. There are various types of hip fractures and they're typically classified according to location. There are intracapsular fractures, which include fractures of the femoral head and femoral neck. There are also extracapsular fractures, which include intertrochanteric and subtrochanteric fractures. This location matters because of potential complications that are dependent on this location. The intracapsular fractures have a higher rate of delayed or failed healing, also known as non-union. They are also more likely to result in avascular necrosis of the femoral head, which is a condition resulting from diminished blood supply to the hip joint. If this isn't treated early, it can lead to a devastating limb loss. Imaging. The most common way hip fractures are diagnosed are through x-rays. However, an MRI or a bone scan may be done as well, as these tests tend to show subtle changes in the bone earlier on. Treatment. Most patients with hip fractures are treated with surgery. If you're too sick to undergo any type of anesthesia or you're unable to walk before the injury, you may be a non-surgical candidate. If the hip fracture is considered stable, it may also not require surgery. Having a licensed physician discuss these different options with you is very important. Understanding the risks and benefits of surgery should always be discussed with your physician and surgeon. Fractures that are intracapsular, your surgeon may fix it with either individual screws or single larger screw. It can become complicated if the blood supply to this area is damaged or potentially compromised. If the blood supply is damaged or compromised, you may need a hemiarthroplasty, which is a type of procedure where the ball of the hip joint is replaced, or sometimes a total arthroplasty or total hip replacement is done, and that's where the entire hip joint is replaced with a metal or plastic ball and socket. Fractures that are a combination of extracapsular and intertrochanteric are usually managed with a hip screw or by a long intramedullary nail, which is placed through the femur bone. Lastly, fractures that are a combination of extracapsular and subtrochanteric are usually managed with a long intramedullary nail. What happens after surgery? Depending on the fracture type and the type of surgery that you receive, hip fractures may take weeks to a few months to fully heal. What happens in rehab for hip fractures after surgery? The rehabilitation process after surgery generally starts immediately. You'll work with physical therapists to help regain strength and maintain your normal range of motion. It's important to follow up routinely with your physician for wound checks, x-rays to follow the healing process, and the need for additional therapy. 
One very important point for those with hip surgery is to follow safety and precautions as dictated by your rehabilitation team. Some hip surgeries will require you not to cross your legs, sit on a regular toilet, or a low chair. You may also not be able to move your leg in a certain way as this can potentially lead to dislocations or the surgical wound to open up. Generally speaking, if following these rules, most patients do extremely well after rehabilitation. What about medical management post-hip surgery? In regards to the medical treatment, the immediate post-operative period tends to be the most painful, so you may require some prescription or over-the-counter pain medications. In addition, blood thinners are typically prescribed for a short course of time to prevent blood clots from forming in the legs. However, this should be detailed by your medical team before and after your surgery. What about preventing hip fractures? There are some steps that can be taken to help prevent a hip fracture. Since most falls tend to occur at home, we recommend that family and friends or trained therapists or nursing aides do a simple home assessment. Measures can then be implemented to decrease this occurrence. Additional items may be prescribed and ordered by the rehabilitation team, and these include installing grab bars in the shower or bathroom, having adequate lighting, especially in the top and the bottom of stairs, and removing clutter from the floors and stairwell. These are just a few of the many things that should be performed. Additionally, using a cane may be recommended by your physician, and that can help with balance even around the house. Is exercise helpful in preventing hip fractures? Exercise, particularly weight-bearing exercise, can help to slow bone loss and maintain muscle mass. Balance training can help to reduce the risk of falls. Having regular physical exams by your physician, and particularly eye exams and blood pressure checks, are important preventative measures to take. Hip fractures are easily prevented with the help of family and friends. A safety of survey of the home and encouraging elderly patients to see a licensed physician in physical medicine rehabilitation may be key in optimizing nutrition and supplementation to prevent osteoporosis, prescribing house and assistive devices, and having your walking and gait checked are simple things that can be done and can prevent devastating hip fractures in your older family members. I would like to thank Dr. Jamal Khan for participating in our Regen Med 101 podcast. Check back in and listen to our interview with Dr. Jamal Khan in a future podcast. Thank you for listening. Until the next episode. Knowledge is power, and it is the first step in knowing your condition, disease, or injury. If you enjoyed listening to our podcast, please visit our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For more detailed information, please visit our website at regionmed101.com. This podcast is made for the general education to the public and is not intended to substitute for or provide medical advice. All information, content, and material from Dr. Yu and his guests on Regen Med 101 is for informational purposes only and are not intended to serve as a substitute for the consultation, diagnosis, and or medical treatment of a qualified physician. Please see podcast and page content for full disclaimer. If you have a medical emergency, call your doctor or 911 immediately.